in liberating strife. Who more than self? Our country loved. Thank you for joining the Bethel L.A. Virtual Worship Experience. Bethel L.A. is a church located in South Los Angeles, community with the community at heart. We minister to the social, physical, and developmental needs to our community through preaching the gospel and providing food and clothing distribution, housing for the homeless, benefits outreach to our veterans, intervention and prevention to gang members re-entering resources to the former incarcerated and mental health services we take seriously jesus example in luke 4 chapter 18 to preach the gospel to the poor and deliverance to the captive to heal the brokenhearted the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised more information is available at our website at www.bethelamela.com We can only do this with your financial gifts. You can support our ministry by visiting our website and clicking on our Donate Now button. We are now accepting giving by text with our phone number 323-310-5800 or through our affiliate giveify.com or by mailing your support to Bethel AME Church, 7900 South Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that have trespassed against us. Now lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father and our God, O oh God, we come just a few of your humble saints. We come at the foot of the cross recognizing and realizing that you've been God all by yourself. You've been God in the good times and you've been God in the bad times. You've been God, oh God, in our homes, in our businesses, on our jobs. You've still been God and we thank you for it. You're a good God today. We thank you for last night's lying down. And this morning's rising up and we don't take it lightly oh God that we found food on our table and that we were clothed in our right mind we thank you today we thank you we realize somebody today don't know you and the pardon of their sins but you blessed us oh God you gave us your son Jesus and we thank you for it we give you all the honor and the praise now we know these are perilous times but you still continue to bless us you sit high and you look low. You watch over us, oh God. You still continue to give us our needs and bless us, oh God. You watch over our children and our loved ones. And for that, we say thank you. We recognize you, oh God, as still the God of heaven and earth. You're the God of the pandemic, oh God. You're the God of our jobs. You're the God of our children. You're the God of our homes, our cars. You're still God in our life. 
no matter what may come, we recognize you for being that. Now bless us on today, oh God. No other help we know than the help that comes from you. Oh God, we're not a ship without a sail. We have a God to glorify, and we thank you today. We got a God to look up to, the God that, that, that created heaven and earth. We thank you today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you've let us know that you have that you have loved us from the beginning. That you knew us in our mother's womb, oh God. And for that, we are just grateful. Now watch over us. Keep us in your care. Answer prayer like we know you can. We are praying and asking, oh God. We're standing in the need of prayer and we're asking you to touch right now. Remember those family members, oh God, that are over the highways and the byways. Remember those that are yet behind iron bars. And then again, oh God, remember our sick and shut in. We thank you for what you've already done. Now bless this church. Bless this pastor. Bless these members. And even though we're not here, we know you're able to touch in the name of Jesus. Now, oh God, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart. Let them be acceptable in thy sight. In thy darling son, King Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he is indeed the head of the church and head of our lives. We live, move, and we have our being because of him. I don't know about you, but even in the midst of the pandemic, I'm still excited about Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we bless and praise you. We love worship and adore you. We thank you for this day, the blessings of the day, for being with us, for being good and being God, for watching over us and keeping us and blessing us. Come Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all of thy quickening power, kindle a flame of sacred love in these hearts of ours come now and your people bless come and give your word success in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen let me invite your attention to first peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 first peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and verse 25. Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy and envy and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow in your salvation. Know that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious in him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in the scripture, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the chief of the corner. And a stone that causes men to stumble on a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message which is also what they were destined for. But you are chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who 
called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives according to the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, that they see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. God's word for God's people, that God's name might indeed be praised. And for a few moments today, I want to preach from the subject, an unconquerable soul, an uncomparable soul. And reflecting on the celebration of our nation's independence in the time which we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic, civil unrest all across the country and the world, an economic recession here at home in America, it brought to remembrance a movie that my wife and I saw some time ago. The movie Invictus was directed by Clint Eastwood and starred Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. The film was a look at the life of Nelson Mandela after the fall of apartheid in South Africa. During Mandela's term as president, he campaigned to host the 1995 Rugby World Cup event as an opportunity to unite his torn country. While in prison for more than 27 years, Mandela had the poem Invictus written on a scrap piece of paper on his cell wall as a source of inspiration. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstances, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. In the movie, Mandela gives this poem to the national rugby team's captain, Francois Prenaire, a white South African played by Matt Damien before the World Cup began as a source of inspiration for their South African team. When asked about their team's chances of winning, it was said that they needed to be better than their best. If they were to win the 1995 Rugby World Cup, they needed to be better than their best. Uh, the word Invictus in Latin means unconquered. The poem was written by the English poet William Ernest Henley. And at the age of 12, Henry diagnosed with tuberculosis of the bone. A few years later, he was told that the only way to save his life was to amputate his leg directly below the knee. In 1875, while in his 20s, he wrote Invictus from his hospital bed. Despite his physical challenge, 
He went on to lead an active life and died at the age of 53. Though physically challenged, his soul was yet unconquered. The apostle Peter exhorts these Christians in the text to live a life better than their best. And in this moment in time, this text challenges us in this day and this time and this God moment that we find ourselves, we are challenged to be better than our best. Peter challenged them to be better than their best by laying aside the sins that sought to conquer their soul. Lay aside, he said in verse 1, all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speaking. In verse 11, he adds all fleshly lusts. All of these seek to conquer our souls. All of these he says to these first century believers sought to conquer their souls. Old habits and old ways, brothers and sisters, can conquer the soul. These were a people, Peter says in verse 10, who in times past had not been a people, who had been exiled from their homeland but were now a people and now back in their homeland. These were people who in times past had not obtained mercy, who had not known a right relationship with God, but now have obtained mercy and now are in right relationship with God by the mercies of God. These were people who in times past and gone, uh, the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified had been a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Old habits and old ways can conquer the soul. The apostle exhorted them to have desire. Sisters and brothers, we have to desire to be better. We, we have to want to be better. We, we have to want more than what it is that we have. We have to have a desire, a longing, and a yearning to be better. He exhorted them to have desire. Have desire to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Desire, he said in verses 2 and 3, the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby and taste that the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. They were exhorted to crave growth. Persons of goodwill in our nation who believe that black lives matter must crave growth. Growth in the acknowledgement of the good and the bad of our nation's history. Growth in acknowledging the contributions of black people to the greatness of our nation as we celebrate our freedom and our independence at this time. Those of goodwill must acknowledge the good and the bad of our nation. Growth in acknowledging the contributions of black people to the greatness of this nation. Christmas Addict was the first person to give his life for freedom for this nation, and we must acknowledge and recognize him. Growth must be craved in acknowledging the sins of our nation in enslaving us and treating us less than human. Crave growth like a chocoholic craves chocolate. Crave growth like an alcoholic craves alcohol. Crave growth like an addict craves his or her addiction. Peter exhorted these Christians to crave and long for growth. If our nation is to be a more perfect union in this moment, We've got to have the desire to grow. This moment demands of us the desire to be better than our best. We've got 
to have the desire to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Being the apostle exhorted them to have discipline. Amen. Verses 5 and 6, Peter says that they were spiritual houses and a holy priesthood, offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. They were spiritual houses being built on the chief cornerstone, namely Jesus Christ. Verse 6 says, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and those that believe on him shall not be confounded. They were a holy priesthood, the people of God, operating in the house of God, namely their bodies. And as a holy priesthood, they were to offer sacrifices in their bodies. They were exhorted by Peter to offer sacrifices of mutual respect and trust one to another. Police brutality and violence against black people will never cease uh, when we do not have mutual respect and trust one for another. It will only cease when we respect each other. That you respect me as a human being and I respect you as someone whom I'm paying to serve and protect me. We must have mutual respect and trust one for another. If indeed the police departments across this country want African-American communities to respect them, they must also respect us. Have mutual respect and trust one for another. As believers, when we see our bodies as spiritual houses, we'll treat them better. When we see our bodies as spiritual houses, we'll eat less and exercise more. When we see our bodies as spiritual houses, we will gossip less and pray more. When we see our bodies as spiritual houses, we will keep up, take less, and give more. When we see our bodies as spiritual houses, we will be more disciplined in our priestly functions and offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Then Peter exhorted them to have devotion. Yes, yes, have devotion. Have desire, have discipline, and have devotion. Devotion to the one that chose them. In verse 9, Peter said that they were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him that called them. Call them out of darkness into the marvelous light. He goes on to say in verse 25 that they were sheep going astray, but now have returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of their souls. Have devotion of the one who's able to bring us out of the darkness of denial and dismissiveness and pretension that racism in our country does not exist and that racism in our country is systemic. Darkness. Bring us out of darkness into the marvelous light that shines upon each of us and lets us know that we are the creation of Almighty God. Have devotion to the one that called them. Have devotion to the one that promised never 
to leave them nor forsake them. So out of the night that covers us, black as the pit from pole to pole, we thank God for an unconquerable soul. In the fair clutch of sins, circumstances, we have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the blood of Satan, terrible blows. Our heads, though bloody, but not unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but horror of the shade. And yet the minutes of the years find and shall find us unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments that stroll. God is the shepherd of our faith. God is the bishop of our souls. Our souls are unconquered. Our heads are unbound. And our spirits are unafraid because God, oh hallelujah, is the shepherd of our faith. And God is the bishop of our souls. I know it might seem tough. I know it might seem rough. I know it might seem difficult, but I've seen in my own life in these last few days, perhaps that which I never thought I'd ever see in my life as Confederate flags have come down from the state houses of state after state after state. And even on this past week, from the state house of Mississippi, I know what God can do. I'm not afraid to face tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow. Maybe blooded, but I'm not Unbowed may have had some challenges, but my soul is still intact. Our spirits are not afraid because God sits high and he looks low. I don't know about you today, but I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt Sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard a voice in the midst of it all telling me still to fight on. For he promised. Oh, hallelujah, he promised. I said, he promised never to leave me. No, never to leave me alone. That's why my sisters and my brothers, even in this hour and in this God moment, we must be better than our best and have an unconquerable soul. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, amen. For your word, we bless you. For your word, we thank you. For the power of your word that is moving in our world, we thank you. As we celebrate this weekend of freedom and independence, we thank you that you are yet freeing your people day by day. Bring us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. My brothers and sisters, I've got some good news for you today. For if you have yet to confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ as the Son of the living God, you can do so right now. 
as you shelter in place, in your home, in your confines, wherever you may be today, I want you to know that the presence of God is there. And if you repeat these words after me, these words, your lips, your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ will come in and take up residence and you will discover new life in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I've fallen short and I've fallen down. I've erred and I've gone astray. Have mercy. You said in your word that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that includes me as well. God, come into my life. Take up residence. Be Lord. Be Savior. Lead me and guide me all along life's way. Bless me to be what you would have me to be. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you've prayed that prayer with me today, welcome to the body of Christ called church. A group of baptized believers in the Lord Jesus Christ using the Holy Bible as our guide to be better than our best. Hallelujah. Desire. Discipline. Devotion to be better than our best. Want to get you connected to that body right here at Bethel, LA, 7900 Southwestern Avenue in the heart of South Los Angeles. Give us a call, 323 750 3240. 323 750 3240. We'll get you hooked up with the Bible study, get you hooked up with a group, get you hooked up with a prayer partner, get you involved in a ministry that you can live out your soul salvation and make full proof of the, to the one who has called you from darkness to the marvelous light. Until next week, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace is our prayer.
Thank you for being a part of the Bethel A&E Worship Experience. There are several opportunities you can express your support through our given ministry by clicking on the Donate Now button on the Bethel AME website, www.bethelamela.com. Reverend Dr. Kelvin T. Calloway and the Bethel family wants to thank you for loving, worshiping, and serving with us. 7900 Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California. Phone number 323-750-3240. Email front office at BethelAMELA.com. Thank you for joining Bethel.